Okay. Um, the next thing on our list, we've got inspection, libraries, the integral, uh, view factor rules. Okay, so this one's a little bit, there's more to this one. Um, so view factor rules are things that uh, are the sort of principles of view factors that you can apply to your problem. And, and let's say you go use a library to look up a, a particular value. You can use that uh, library value in conjunction with these different view factor rules to get, you, um, to get you all the rest of the view factors you need. Okay, so actually stepping back a second, what we're trying to do in any of these problems is you need to come up with the, pretty much the relationship for view factor between every surface involved in your problem. So you've got three surfaces, you need to know one to three, one to two, two to three, like all of them. So you're basically filling out this square matrix of view factors. Once you have pieces of that matrix filled out, you can start using these rules to fill in the others. So it's almost like, um, it's kind of like a Sudoku, right? You, you know a piece of information, and then you know it has to follow certain rules in the, in the row and column. And you can use that information to start like filling in your grid. Okay, so the rules are uh, as follows. The first is called the enclosure rule. The enclosure rule um, says, let's draw some enclosure over here. So I've got maybe a three surface body like this. Let's say this is surface one, this is surface two, this is surface three. And I'm concerned with what's happening internally, right? Um, let's say like this is a, a void inside some bigger body and we are just looking at the, the in internal um, surface to surface radiation exchange. So this is an enclosure. And by enclosure, I think it's hopefully obvious that I mean it's a structure that has no opening in it. So there are surfaces that cover all of the um, possible ways that light could escape from this when emitted. The enclosure rule says, if I look at the view factor from one to one, that is the view factor from one to itself, and I add to that the view factor from one to two, and I add to that the view factor from one to three, those have to sum up to be one. It's a pretty intuitive rule. It's saying if I emit light from one, it has to go somewhere. It's an enclosure, so if you add up all the light that's emitted, it's going to equal one. Um, so that, that's true, and I think maybe the subtle thing here is the indexing. So we're saying from one to another surface, from one to another surface, and so on. We could do the same thing for surface two, so we'd say F 2, 1 plus F 2, 2 plus F 2, 3. That's also equal to 1. So that's a separate application of the same enclosure rule for a different surface. So don't make the mistake when you're just writing out math of saying, you know, F, uh, F uh, 1, 1 plus F 2, 1 plus F 3, 1, right? You flip the indices around, it doesn't hold anymore. It's always from the emitting surface to all the other surfaces that it holds. Um, so I guess we can write this generally as for any number of surfaces. We can say that the summation from J equals 1 to N, where N is the number of surfaces, of F I comma J is equal to 1. And that is uh, for all I. Uh, so for all I in the set, I guess 1 to N. So just to remind ourselves of the nomenclature here, we're summing for a given j, uh, so j from 1 to n, for a given i, that all equals 1. right? And then you can reapply that same rule for every time you, you update your value of i. Okay, That's the enclosure rule. Um, the, other, the next rule is called reciprocity. So enclosure rule, reciprocity. So reciprocity, I, I briefly mentioned before, but it's the idea that if you know the view factor from, I, from say, 1 to 2, and you know the areas of 1 and, and 2, those surfaces, then you can compute the, the reciprocal view factor from 2 to 1, just with that information. Um, so the definition is um, basically A i times F i j is equal to A j times F j 
So this one's actually a, a pretty powerful one. It lets you just know the areas of the surfaces involved, one of the view factors, and you immediately can compute the other. So let's say you have a situation where like you, there is no library view factor for the specific situation that you have. Um, maybe it's a weird shape or something like that. You can, go, you can use this rule to get the view factor of the reciprocal and then apply it based on the areas. So it, it opens up a lot of possibilities. Um, you might wonder, I guess, where this comes from. So we could maybe briefly derive where it comes from. I guess the idea is that if you take radiation emitted by a surface, um, that is, let's say, Q dot I is equal to uh, AI sigma T I to the fourth. Right? That's going to be the radiation that is emitted. The radiation emitted by J would be the same thing. Um, but let's see. Well, let's say, what, what is the radiation that's hitting J from this? So it would be uh, uh, F, F I J times A I sigma T I to the fourth. That's the radiation that's hitting surface J from surface I. Um, let's see. OK, so then if we look at the, the reverse situation, if we look at what is coming from J back to I, uh, so this is all from, from I. And then if we look at j back to I, it would be f uh, j i a j sigma t j to the fourth. OK, so then we'd say uh, we could use these together to say all right, q dot from I to j is equal to what's leaving I. So that would be f um, i j a i sigma T i to the fourth. Right, so it's leave, that's what's leaving i going to j. So q to i to j. But we also have to look at what's coming back. right? And that's what the other thing we just computed. So that we'd say minus f j i a j sigma t j to the fourth. OK, so how does this help us? Um, again, what we're trying to do is prove this is true. So if we look at this situation, and let's say we imagine a case where ti and tj are equal to each other. In that special case, we know that the net radiation exchange has to be 0. Right? You, you have um, equal temperatures, and so anything that's leaving and hitting the other surface is going to have to have uh, the same coming back. Right? They're, they're at the same temperature. Um, so if we say that, uh, then we can make uh, the simplification. <coughs> So I guess we say here that T i equals T j. Therefore, Q to i to j is equal to 0. Then we're just left with the simplification that you know, A i uh, F i j equals A j F j i. Right? It's, that's just where it comes from. Questions on that? It's kind of a simple. Seemingly circular proof, but uh, if it, if this is true, in the condition where q dot and, and the temperatures are are equal and q dot zero, then it has to be true always. Right? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't get how this rule would work if the bodies are at different temperatures. So if the bodies are so if if we all agree that this works when they're at the same temperature, then what you're left with is actually just an equation that doesn't involve temperature at all. So then, so this is essentially a geometric consideration. So this relationship is there; it's sort of in the equation, regardless of whether temperatures are different. When they when they are different, then the uh, difference in temperatures has to be exactly counterbalanced by Q dot, according still according to that relationship. Okay. Okay. So enclosure reciprocity; those are uh, two important rules. Uh, what else to say about that? Um, I think that's kind of it. So, so those would be um, those would be the, the tools you'd use to help you fill in your your matrix. Right? You are using the um, the library lookup when you need it. All the other times when you don't need that, you can use these rules to fill things in. Um, there's a few other say like secondary techniques that can be really useful. Um, one of them, I guess. So Monte Carlo is one. The one we'll talk about now is something called the method of 
strings, uh, cross around cross strings. 